Okay, but it's your high school revision podcast. This is uh, for obviously GCSE PE, uh, OCR, and we are looking at paper two here. Uh, and this should be a fairly quick podcast on diet and nutrition. Um, the first thing that we've asked you on, or seems to be a common question about diet and nutrition, seems to be about having a balanced diet. And a balanced diet is having a wide variety of foods, but also making sure you have the right quantity of each food group, depending on the type of activity that you are playing. Obviously, a weightlifter would have a very different diet than, let's say, a long-distance runner. So a balanced diet for a weightlifter may be different than a balanced diet on a runner because a weightlifter would need more protein, whereas a long-distance runner might need more uh, carbohydrates for energy. So it's having the correct amount of each food group to allow the body to function efficiently and effectively. Um, obviously, generally... Your diet should should contain roughly half carbohydrates and then proteins and fats. But obviously, you need vitamins and minerals and water and a bit of fiber in there too. But obviously, if you're not burning off that energy, you should already all all know that if you don't burn off calories that you take intake from food, it will probably turn to fat. So if you overeat, you'd put weight on. Um, so you need to know comp- components for balanced diet and examples of food that would go in each. So there are seven food groups. Uh, First one being carbohydrates. Uh, Carbohydrates are the first main source of energy. They are essential for energy production. Um, They circulate in the blood as glucose. So carbohydrates get broken down into glucose uh, and glycogen, which help power the muscle in aerobic and anaerobic activity. Um, And obviously carbohydrate is the main energy source. You'd need quite a lot of carbohydrates if you're doing lots of Lots of exercise, so there is something called carbo-loading. Carbo-loading is where, prior to competition, you have extra carbohydrates. You people are eating a lot of pasta or rice to ensure that they've got enough glucose or glycogen in the muscles, therefore they can go for longer without getting tired. So carbohydrates, they are, there's two types, simple ones, which really sugary things, which give you a quick energy boost, fruit juice, honey, things like that. And then there's more complex carbohydrates for longer term exercise, pasta, potatoes, white rice, bread, etc., um, which is really needed for long term energy production. So carbohydrates are the first main source of energy. Second source of energy are fats um, and fats. If once you've burned out your carbohydrate stores, you start burning fats they are again a source of energy again there's good fats and bad fats really so there's good fats and things like avocados and nuts and um seeds and things like that and then obviously there's obviously bad fats in fried food crisps butter cream alcohol all contain bad fats that would increase your cholesterol but fats are the second energy source they insulate so they keep you a bit warmer they can cushion organs but most importantly they are the second major energy source which you will burn so long distance runners who burn off all their carbohydrate stores would then need a fat supply to make sure they've still got energy to do their exercise triathletes the same tour de france cyclists um, and they'll burn that fat off second. So that's the second major energy source. The third third macronutrient, which provides a little bit of energy, uh, is protein. And you'll find protein in meat and fish and eggs, as long as you don't cook them uh, in too much fat. So things like boiled eggs, but fish, uh, red meat, chicken, etc. And although it's a third energy source, it doesn't provide that much energy. Its main job is that it aids recovery uh, of m- muscles when you've done... Uh, training sessions so you'll see weightlifters who are trying to keep big strong muscles etc um eating a lot of protein a lot of chicken a lot of fish etc after training to help growth and repair of muscles so protein although it's a third energy provider its main job is to aid growth and repair of muscles after that we've then got um we've got food groups that don't provide energy so they all provide a bit of energy carbohydrates most then fats then proteins we've got vitamins and minerals um vitamins and minerals you'll find in lots of foods obviously fruit vegetables etc being the main ones and they are vital uh, for lots of body processes that happen so uh, vitamins are going to help things like skin and eyesight uh, nails hair um connective tissue or all helped by having vitamins in your diet um, and it's you know some people take multivitamins or supplements but they're really important for for making your body work effectively and vitamins tend to be things said 
external things, nails, hair, skin, etc. And you've also got minerals that do really important jobs as well. So for instance, you've got calcium that would help bone development and bone strength. You've got iron that would help um, hemoglobin in the blood. So therefore help you get more oxygen into your blood to take round to your, mus to your muscles. Um, so, so lots of different fruit and veg would, would have different vitamins and minerals in them to help you keep your body healthy in lots of different ways. The next food group is fiber. Uh, fiber normally found in things like cereal and beans. So things like Weetabix, Shreddies, uh, Bran Flakes. And obviously things like um, beans, you have things like chickpeas and kidney beans all provide fiber in them. And what they are really important for is helping your digestive health. They help your digestive system work effectively and obviously get rid of waste, which is healthy to get rid of things that your body doesn't need. Um, it can reduce help, help reduce the risk of obesity. The other thing it does is it keeps you feeling full. So if you're an athlete that maybe likes to eat a bit more than they should, fiber would he help keep you full, therefore uh, not making you feel that you need to eat as soon. So it could help you lose weight. And finally, we've got water, which you would all know is essential for hydration. Of dehydrated athletes uh, cannot function as well. They cramp far more easily. Um, and it's essential before, during, after training. It dissolves things. It helps reactions. It moves things around the body. It helps get rid of waste. Um, water is absolutely vital in your diet. Um, overall, a number of things. You would obviously, as an athlete, you would limit quite how much fat you have. You wouldn't need too much fat in your diet. You would make sure you had a lot of water in your diet because you want your body processes to work properly. Vitamins and minerals will keep your body strong and healthy. Um, and depending on the type of sport you're doing, you'd either need a lot of carbohydrate if it's for energy over a long period of time, or you need a lot of protein if you're cooking for muscle growth and repair. Um, balanced diet would contain all food groups, but it's the amount of each food group you have. And actually, if people are overweight, it tends to be they're eating too much fat in their diet or they're not exercising enough. So that would conclude this little podcast about diet. Remember, make sure you can define what a balanced diet is, the correct amount of each food group and having the right amount of each food group depending uh, on the sport that you're playing. Um, again, this is for paper two. Look out on this um, YouTube channel for lots more revision podcasts for lots of different areas of the course.